All right, so review, the topic 10 review of version one. Make sure that you're, if you're in first year, you're watching this, not fifth. Here we go. It says, find the value of the variables. If your answer is not a whole number, leave it in its simplest radical form. What do you do? Oh, it's going to be a long day. Look at that triangle. It is a right triangle. Do you want, can you use Pythagorean theorem? Can you do a squared plus b squared equals c squared? Yes. Can you use trigonometry? Yes. Well, it would be uber smart to do special right triangle tricks because it is a 30, 60, 90, Right, triangle. That's the fastest way to do it, so that's how I'm going to teach it. Here we go. Just so you remember, always put a star on your 30-degree angle. Why do I put a star there? Because that's where I want to start. Get it? I want to start there. So what is the side opposite of the star? That's my one side, because I want to start... There, one. Now I go to the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse. And the other one is the square root of three. Is it coming back to you? So now I've labeled this 30, 60, 90 right triangle. One, hypotenuse, and the square root of three. I'm looking for x. How do I get from one <coughs> to the square root of three? times the square root of 3. So I have to do 5 times the square root of 3. And the answer, x equals 5 square roots of 3. Yes, you can do trigonometry and solve for the answer. Yes, you can do Pythagorean theorem and solve for the answer. But the fastest way to do it is special right triangle tricks. And on... And Banker references formula chart on student desk. It's right here. He even has it labeled for you. Which side's the one side, which side's the two side, which side's the square root of three side. Alright? Yeah, this is good. Hmm. I'm gonna change colors to keep it fresh. Hey, what kind of triangle is that? A right triangle? A 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So I'm gonna put a star on the 30 degree angle. Because that's where I want to start. So I'm, I'm trying to label one, two, and three. I start opposite of the star. One. Then I go to the hypotenuse. And the other one is the square root of three. Yeah? It tells me how to map. I'm trying to solve for x and y. So how do I get from 1 to 2? It's getting bigger. Multiply by 2. So 1 times 2 is 2. What's 11 times 2? So y equals 22. How do I get from 1 to the square root of 3? <coughs> Multiply <coughs> by what? By the square root of 3. So 11 times the square root of 3 is 11 square root of 3. <coughs> Thank you. So do you guys see why the star is there? You're, like, What is the other purpose of the star? You cannot math around the star. You can't go around the star. It's like a big roadblock, huh? It's, kind of a, it's a point of reference, and it tells you you can't math that way. So if you have 11 here, you have to... Multiply it to get bigger, and you have to multiply it to get bigger. There are two ways you can do it. Because 1 times 2 is 2. So how do I get from 1 to 2? I, I multiply it by 2. So it's kind of, it's kind of a, a road map to tell you what you're supposed to be doing. Let's go pink. 
Find the missing link. What do you do here? Huh? Yeah, this is Pythagorean theorem. Did you see any angles in there? So you cannot use trigonometry. And because there are no angles in there, you know it's not a 45, 45, 90, or a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So now we're just trying to find this x right here. I'm going to queue up my calculator. So I have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And you're trying to solve for x. Remember I gave you guys a shortcut to speed your math up. If you want to solve for a leg, you're going to try and use the square root of the hypotenuse minus a leg. So two different ways you can do it. You can do it the long way and get the right answer. You can do it the short way and get the right answer. I don't care how you do it. Just hopefully you're getting the right answer. So I have the square root of 17 squared minus the leg squared, 8. Yes. So what's your answer here? x equals 8. Whole number. You're going to have to bubble that in on your test. 8. Can you handle that? There's nothing distracting you. There's no decimals. There's not 18 million boxes. It's just the answer, 8. All right, a slide 4.1 meters long makes an angle of 35 degrees with the ground. To the nearest tenth of a meter, how far above the ground is the top of the slide? I'm going to change this to the nearest whole meter, because that's how your test looks. Whole <coughs> meter, whole numbers. How do I solve for x? Is that... A 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Is it a 45, 45, 90 right triangle? Can I use Pythagorean theorem? Yeah. No, because I'm missing one, two sides. So what am I stuck with? Trigonometry. And on your blue paper, it says Soka Toa. Some old hipster caught another hipster tripping on apples. So if I'm trying to find x and I have a 35 degree angle, which trigonometric function can I use? And if you look at your triangle, it says there is an angle. What is x? Is that opposite? Is that adjacent? Or is that hypotenuse? This is opposite. What is the 4.1? Hypotenuse. What is the trigonometric function that has O and H in it? Sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. So I have to write that. The sine of the angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. We're looking for the nearest whole number. What is the trick that Baker taught you when there's a number under the vinculum or the bottom of the denominator? It gets a fast pass to the front. He cuts in line and steals the last cookie. 4.1 sine of 35 equals x. You take that expression and you type it in your calculator and you trust what the machine tells you. 4.1 Sine of the 35 degree angle, 2.35. Nearest whole number, 2. Because your test is going to ask for whole numbers, 2. Right? I asked for, it, the paper says decimals, but I'm saying whole numbers because that's what your test is asking. You have a triangle, ABC. A is a right angle. B is 45 degrees. 
What is the length of BC? What kind of triangle is that? A right triangle. Specifically, it's a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. So how do I get from a leg to the hypotenuse? Multiply by the square root of 2. So what is 10 times the square root of 2? So then you have a multiple choice that would say like 10 square root of 2. Everything would be as a radical expression. What if they're decimals? What do you do? Huh? If, if, it, if it happens to have decimals as the, the answers, you can just do this and see what the answer is. 14.14. You can just type in your answer and see what it looks like both ways. That kind of makes sense? It would be multiple choice, so whatever the answer gives you. Ooh. Find the value of x. Round to the nearest degree. What are we solving for here? x, and what is x? Is it a length or a measurement of a degree? It's a degree. So I have x right here. See it? So I'm trying to figure out which trigonometric function can I use with the information that I'm given. Is that sine, cosine, or tangent? Sine. Sine. Because I have 12 is opposite of the angle, and 15 is the hypotenuse, and you look at your paper, and the only trigonometric function that has an O and an H in it is the sine function. That's S-O-H, some old hipster. So I have sine of X is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Now remember, sine goes to the other side of the tracks. He goes to the west side, if you will. And he is an east side member. So when he crosses the train tracks, he's probably going to get in trouble and get minus one life. See what I did there? He loses a life. He's on the wrong side of the track. That's like a gang reference. Doesn't make sense. Okay. Otherwise, you know that if you're solving for an angle, you have to use the inverse of sine. So for an angle, you use inverse sine. If he goes to the other side of the tracks, he's going to get minus one life. So in my calculator, now I'm trying to type in trig inverse sine of that ratio. 12 divided by 15. 53.13, nearest degree. Huh? 53. So now I know that x is 53 degrees. So when you're solving for an angle measure, you have to use the inverse of sine. Sine goes to the other side of the tracks and loses one life. That's why it's sine negative 1. He's like a cat, right? He's got nine lives, so he can go to the other side and lose one and still be fine. See what I did there? Here we go. We are solving for an angle measurement again. That should key you that you're using the inverse of a trigonometric function. What is the trig function that uses 11 and 20? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. That's what I have. So I can do the cosine of x equals 11 over 20. Now remember, we got this east side homie that's going to the west side. He's going to cross the train tracks and lose a life. It becomes the inverse of cosine. 
That's what I type in my calculator. Cosine negative 1 of 11 over 20. <coughs> Inverse cosine. 11 divided by 20. Nearest whole degree. 57 degrees. Is everybody cool with that? 57 57 degrees. I'm not going to be here to hold your head tomorrow. And if you got $56.63, how many dollars are you closer to? $56 or $57? That's why it's, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's rounding up to the nearest whole number. I'm just trying to get you guys not to use decimals on your test because it makes, like, you could put 56.6 .6 and get it wrong. You could put 56.3 and get it wrong. Put 56.4 and get it wrong. I just want 57. So the, the test will look like this. And I'm like, hey, hey bro, it's 50. Seven, you hit the bubble in those two numbers. There's no decimals or anything, it's just two columns. Makes it real easy. Five and seven. Find the missing length. Anybody? Pythagorean theorem. We're looking for this piece. That's A squared plus B squared equals c squared. And I showed you guys the trick. You can take the square root immediately at both sides. And if you do the square root of 10 squared plus 14 squared, it will give you the answer right from your calculator. Boom. Nearest whole number, 17. Now look at your answer. Does it make sense? Is 17 bigger than both of the legs of that right triangle? Yeah, so it will work. You can even use test taking strategies and eliminate all the answers that are smaller than 10 or 14. It gives you a better, ch better chance at guessing if you're going to be like just a guesser. A triangle has side lengths of 12, 35, and 37. Is that triangle acute, obtuse, or right, those formulas are at the top of that blue sheet. It tells you what is acute, what is obtuse, and what is right. Right here, this blue one. All right, they're all right here on this paper. So I have to figure out A squared plus B squared. And how does that relate to C squared? So I just checked my calculator. What is 12 squared plus 35 squared? One thousand three hundred and sixty-nine. I gotta figure out what is thirty-seven squared. <clears throat> One thousand three hundred and sixty-nine. Are the? I don't know why I did that. Which one's bigger? They're equal. What does that mean? So you you would circle. It's a right triangle because a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Look at the top of your paper and it says when a squared plus b squared equals c squared, it's a right triangle. See that at the top, the very, very top? There you go. Find x. Round to the nearest whole number. Whole number. Whole number. We're trying to use something to solve for x. So what is x in relation to 23? Opposite. What is the 15? So what trig function uses opposite and hypotenuse? Sine. So if I do the sine of 23, it should be equal to opposite over hypotenuse. 
Again, we got a number in the denominator. What happens to that number? He goes to the front and takes the last cookie. He cuts in line. 15 sine 23 is equal to x. Go to my calculator and type that in. 15 sine 23. Nearest whole number. 6. You like it or not like it? That's halfway right there. Solve for X. So this is opposite. Are you there? This is adjacent. And this is hypotenuse. I'll let you ponder that while I answer the phone. Are you there? Hello. Should you write in your mail? Yeah. All right. So what do you, what uses adjacent and hypotenuse? Cosine. So the cosine of thirty six degrees is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. What happens when there's a number on the bottom? It goes to the front. We're going to type 10 cosine 36 in our calculator. It's going to give us an answer. We're looking for the nearest whole number. 10 cosine 36. 8. Does that answer make sense? Is it smaller than the hypotenuse? Nailed it. Number 12. This one's going to be a little different. What uses 12 and x? What, what trig function? Cosine uses 12 and x because this is adjacent and this is hypotenuse. I do not have an opposite side. So the cosine of the angle is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. This one's different. <laughs> what do I do when there's an x on the bottom, a, a variable on the bottom of the denominator? Do you remember what happens? So all of this and all of this switch places. You get x equals 12 over the cosine of 32. All right. Now, typing this in can be weird. Um, I like to do this. I like to do control divided by so it gives me a top box and a bottom box. I know that 12 is supposed to go on top and the cosine of 32 is supposed to go on the bottom. 14 is the nearest whole number, 14. And I look at that. Does that answer make sense? Is 14 bigger than 12? Yeah, so it could be a possible, it is the length of the hypotenuse. I'm going to change colors. Hopefully it's boring at this point because it's so repetitive. What trick function uses 19 and x? Sine, because I have an opposite length and a hypotenuse. So now I got the sine of 20 is equal to the opposite link over the hypotenuse. Oh, there it is again. What happens when there's a variable under the rat under the denominator, under the vinculum? <coughs> they switch places. This goes here and this goes here. So I have to type in x equals 19 over sine 20. I may evaluate that what that is. Control, divide, 19 on top, 
sine of 20 on the bottom. Ooh. 56. That one's weird, right? You got $55 and 55 cents. Is that closer to 56 or 55? So it's 56. And, then, and 56 is bigger than 19. It makes sense as a possible answer. Oh, yeah. Money right here. Write the ratio for sine and cosine of angle A. No math here. Just write the ratio. We have angle A. And it says write the sine of A and write the cosine of A. What is the sine of A? What is the cosine of A? So this is opposite, this is adjacent. This is... You don't have to solve for anything, you just have to write the ratio. So I'm not asking for a numerical answer, it just says what ratio is sine? So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. If you look at that triangle in the middle of your paper, it kind of tells you, like, if your angle is at the top, this is what is opposite of that angle, this is what is adjacent to that angle. So this is the only question that kind of, or there's two questions that kind of use that angle of elevation. It says the student in Mr. Collins' class used the surveyor's measuring device to find the angle from their location to the top of the building. So kids are standing here, and they found the angle from here to the top of the building is 72 degrees. They also measured their distance from where they were standing to the building. It says how tall is the building? X right here. So we have to use some sort of trigonometry. What is the only trig function that does not use hypotenuse? <coughs> tangent. So if you do the tangent of 72, it will be equal to opposite over adjacent. And tangent of 72, all right, so on your paper, like the questions at the bottom and the diagrams at the top, they got kind of split up a little bit. <coughs> what happens when there's a number under the denominator or under the vinculum? Fast pass to the front. Is anybody concerned about what a vinculum is? Or just let me just say, you know what a vinculum is? This is the vinculum right here. The line that separates the numerator and the denominator. The front edge. So, huh? Just call it the top. But it, yeah, it's called the vinculum. It's like saying phone versus Android or iPhone, or if you want to get super specific, like iPhone 4, iPhone 5, or whatever the newest one is. What's the newest one? 11? 12? 10? X? Cool. It's a good talk. 100? <coughs> Tangent? 72. Nearest whole foot. Three away. So this building is 308 feet tall. Find the length of the missing side of this very special right triangle. Hint, hint. It's a 45, 45, 90. So if this length is 8, how big is this length? 8. How do I get from here to here? Multiply by the square root of 2. So 8 times the square root of 2. There are problems. A 
triangle has side lengths of 23, 6, and 28. Is it acute, obtuse, or right? So we go to the top of our blue paper and we look. A squared plus B squared. How does that relate to C squared? 6 squared and 23 squared is 565, 28 squared, 784. Which one's bigger? C is bigger. So when C is bigger, what does that mean? It's an obtuse triangle. Hopefully another easy one. Just write the ratios. What is the ratio for tangent of y? Write the tangent of y and write the tangent of z. So y is right here. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Tangent of y is 7 over 4. You're not even using this number. Tangent does not use hypotenuse. <coughs> what is the tangent of z? Tangent of z is right here. What is opposite of z? What is adjacent to z? That's it. On your test, if you can just knock out the first one, everything else is wrong. As tangent of y is correct, and every other tangent of y is incorrect, so if you get one of them right, you get all of them right. That is a very special kind of triangle. It's a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. So how do I get from here to here? It's getting smaller. So I need to do 24 divided by the square root of 2. You remember how to do that one? Multiply by 1. A really nasty version of 1. I have to get this radical out from the bottom. So 24 times the square root of 2. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2. And then you have to kind of math here. What is 24 divided by 2? So this side is 12 square root of 2. And this side is 12 square root of 2. Depending on what the answer looks like. Um, this is the other angle of elevation, angle of depression problem. It says a large totem pole in the state of Washington is 100 feet tall. So you have a totem pole right here, and it's 100 feet tall. It says it casts a shadow 249 feet long. Find the measure of angle A or find this angle of elevation right here. So we're, we're looking for this X, theta, missing angle, angle A. What is the only trig function that doesn't use hypotenuse? Tangent. So if I do the tangent of X, it should be equal to opposite over adjacent. So when we're looking for an angle measure, he has to go to the other side of the tracks and he's going to lose a life. Tangent, <coughs> inverse tangent is 100 divided by 249. So inverse tangent, 
And then you can do control divided by 100 over 249. Nearest whole degree, 22. All right, I'm going to stop there.